Using the third person character template as a base for Wind Waker Unreal sounded like a good idea at first, but it turned out to be a big mistake. It handled the basics for sure, but it was clunky, overcomplicated, and a total blueprinting nightmare. So I scrapped it and built my own. In this video, I'll show you how I did it by walking through the different directions I took. And by the end, you'll know how to start building a base for your own controller from scratch. One that moves and feels exactly how you want. Now, to give you a clear understanding of how I built my controller, we must start from where it all began. All right, now this basic system lets our pawn move around, but movement really isn't the issue here. You see, we ain't got no collision detection. We've already hit our first major snag. Enabling the sweep test on our set actor location node would at least prevent clipping through objects, but it would also completely stop all of our movement. This is a pretty limited system right out of the box. Ideally, we'd like to have our pawn slide along the wall, like most other games do. But what if there was an easier way? What if we could build on something that handles all that collision code for us? So check this out. The floating pawn movement component is built on the pawn movement component, which also happens to be the case for the character movement component. And the best part, both of them inherit all the collision handling code straight from the pawn movement component. If you're following along, let's try adding the floating pawn movement component to our blueprint. We can also now clear out all the old code here. Most of it won't be needed anymore. To get this guy moving again, all we need to do is drop an add movement input node into the graph. Just like the character movement component, we've got ourselves some movement and proper collision handling. But what about gravity? Since this is using the floating pawn movement component, our little pawn is, well, floating. How can we fix that? By using a line trace to check if we're on the ground. Now. A line trace is basically just drawing a virtual ray from one point to another to check if it hits anything. We'll start by casting the line from our actor's location, aiming down based on the capsule's half height towards the ground. To make sure we're not too close to the surface, we add a little extra height and some padding to avoid collision issues. When the line hits something, like the ground, it returns true, letting us know that the pond is grounded. And it also gives us information about the surface we just hit. With this logic, because our line trace hasn't detected any ground beneath us, we can drag off the false pin and subtract gravity from the floating pond's velocity. And just like that, we got ourselves some gravity. Now, if you're like me, you probably want to level up your custom movement controller some more. This was where I stepped away from the floating pond movement component and went straight for the parent class, the pond movement component. The catch? We can't just add this directly into our blueprint. Where we're going, we're gonna need some code. But first... I've been adding more levels and areas to explore in Wind Waker Unreal. Getting Hyrule Castle interior into the game was pretty simple, but I did run into some light leaking issues. My current solution isn't perfect, but hey, it works for now. There might be a castle exterior model out there that could fix the light leaking and also make it seamless, but who knows? Maybe I'll stumble upon something soon. What do you guys think? Also, time for a special announcement. I've already had a lot of you play test the game and the feedback has been absolutely incredible. Honestly, the movement controller wouldn't be where it is right now if not for the input. If you want to be a part of the playtesting, just hop into the Discord. It's the easiest way for me to share builds and get the feedback we need. Thank you all so much for the help. I know switching to C++ might be a deal breaker for some of you, and honestly, I totally get it. That said, my pride got the best of me, and my current Link controller went down this C++ road. The quickest way to get started is by heading up to Tools and selecting Add New C++ Class. Just to be safe, I recommend backing up your project first. Trust me, you do not want to be caught off guard if something breaks. There is no going back after this. Once you're all set with that, click on All Classes, and then we can just search for Pawn Newton Component. We want to hit Next and give your new class a cool name. If you're unsure about anything else here, it's best just to leave it as it is. The only thing we need to focus on is the name. Hit create class and let Unreal do its thing. This will take a minute, so I'll be right back. 
I'm right back and my IDE is open with our new class ready to go. We're not going super in depth here, just enough to get something that moves and collides the way we need it to. I've added a link in the description to some Unreal documentation. It's a bit more advanced than what I'll show you, but stick with me and I'll break down exactly what you need. First, we need to override the tick component function in our class. If you're using Rider, like me, there's a handy shortcut that lets you browse through all the overrides and implement them automatically. Once that's done, we can copy paste a specific snippet from the documentation right into tick component. After that, go into your header file and add this little bit to the U class thingy. Now, just hit build and launch your project. And if everything goes well, here's the cool part. This is where the fun begins. Open up your pond and replace the floating pond movement component with your new movement component. Connect it to the now empty slots where the floating pond movement component was. Hit play, and just like that, we're moving and colliding right off the bat. What we've done here is essentially created an even more stripped down version of the floating pond movement component, but there's no acceleration or deceleration, just a fixed movement amount. And we've also lost our gravity again. If we want to be able to add gravity back and also change the amount we move, let's go ahead and move desired movement this frame to the header file. Now we can add a U property right above it so we can edit defaults directly in the blueprint. We're gonna jump back into our C++ class and store desired movement this frame's Z value into a float we're gonna call desired Z. That way we can set the Z back to what it was before we gathered the movement. While we're at it, let's take it a step further. Copy and paste that U property line and below it, create a new float variable max movement speed. Replace the hard-coded 150 with max movement speed in the C++ code. This basically just lets us control how much we want our pawn to move since it's all just a fixed amount. Now we're going to jump back into the blueprint and make some modifications to our code. First, we're going to go ahead and replace all the references to velocity with our desired movement this frame variable we added into our header file. With our line trace logic from earlier, we can drag off the true pin and set our desired movement this frame's z value to zero. That way gravity stops accumulating when we're grounded. This is also where we would actually do some kind of vector plane project based off of the normal of the floor that we're standing on. That way we can help the pond stay grounded when ascending and descending slopes. But that's a little advanced, so we won't cover it for now. If you'd like some more information though, let me know and I can make another one of these types of videos covering that. One more thing. We gotta make sure we go back and apply delta time to our gravity subtraction. This is obviously something that you should probably do in the C++ code, but again, for the purposes of the video, we're just going to do it like this for now. This is just for demonstration purposes, so let's just keep going. Just like that, we got our core functionality back, and our checklist is now complete. And that's how I built my custom character controller. We've covered the basics, and now you've got a solid foundation to start tweaking and adding your own features. Working on this remake got me thinking about what makes games like Zelda so special. Plus, to be totally and completely honest with you, I'm a little afraid about this project being built on top of glass. All it takes is for Nintendo to come in and give me a cease and desist or whatever, and boom, I might also lose my channel. And I don't want that to happen because I do enjoy making videos and I, the project alone is enough to put a, a target on my back. So, I wanted to dive into some gaming content on here. It won't just be Zelda or Unreal stuff either. See, I'm a huge Metroid fan, and with Metroid Prime 4 Beyond coming out soon, how about a Metroid Mega Marathon? What do you guys think about that? Also, if this was helpful in any way, or you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, like, subscribe, the works. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.